All right, so let's go through some of the term differences between ASME and ISO. And this is similar to, we might call something an elevator, and the Europeans call it a lift. Or we call it a bathroom, and they call it a water closet. So same concept, it's just different names for it. So let's start with the whole concept of GD and T. That's what we call it in ASME, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. Now in ISO, they call it GPS, geometrical product specifications. Now, I will say, I think we do have a better name there because GPS does get mixed up with the global positioning system, but GD&T versus GPS. Basic dimension, that's going to be those boxed up dimensions that we have, 12 millimeters, theoretically exact. They actually call that a theoretically exact dimension instead, or a TED for short. True profile and true position, that's the theoretical place a surface is supposed to be, or a theoretical place a hole is supposed to be that your tolerance zone is centered around. They call both of those things the theoretically exact feature, or the TEF. We call it a datum reference frame. That's the three-plane coordinate system. They call it a datum system. A little short and snappier there, I think. We call it a feature control frame, the frame that we control features with, and they call it a tolerance indicator instead. Datum feature symbol is how you identify a certain feature as a datum feature, and they call that a datum feature indicator. Same thing, right? MMC modifier is what we call it in the ASME standards, and they call it an MMR, the maximum material requirement. So MMC versus MMR. And same thing, LMC versus LMR. We have the term called virtual condition, which is that single worst case boundary that the feature cannot enter. And they call that the maximum material virtual condition, so they get a little more specific. And then you could also call it the least material virtual condition when you use the L modifier. The last thing we have is a datum feature simulator, also known as a true geometric counterpart. We call that an associated feature when you're doing with ISO standards. So really same concepts here, just a name change. Wanted you familiar with some of those. I'll try to use those terms as we go through these videos. So here's these common drawing symbols that I showed in the beginning of unit one here. And I have the ASME term and symbol, and right next to it, the ISO term and symbol. And you can see how similar they are. We've talked about basic dimension, and they call that the theoretically exact dimension, or the TED. A reference dimension in ASME, they call that an auxiliary dimension. Same thing. Number of places, they call it a repeated dimension. Diameter, radius, most of these are the same. There are a few symbols that we have in ASME, like controlled radius, which they don't have a definition for in ISO. Other things, like we call this a counterbore where they call it a cylindrical counterbore. They don't have a symbol for spot face. So we have spot face SF in the bottom of the bucket, and they just don't have that instead. Most of these other symbols are the same. Dimension not to scale, out of scale dimension, that's the same thing. They do have continuous feature in ASME standards. And they have a similar concept called Common Tolerance Feature of Size, or CT. So they actually have different name and different symbol for that same concept. In the next video, I want to go into a little bit more on independency is what we have in ASME, which they don't have. And in ISO, they have an envelope principle symbol, which we don't have. So this next video will show why we have an independency symbol in ASME and why ISO standard has an envelope principle symbol.